everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church, Beaverton, Oregon. And this is not a Friday reflection. This is just a, a great hope and a celebration and a wish for you that you would have a blessed day of the resurrection of the Lord that we also sometimes call Easter. I want to offer you some thoughts because uh, in our culture, Easter becomes maybe most akin to maybe bunny rabbits and other kind of things, which I love bunny rabbits. They're fine. But as Catholic Christians, we believe deeply in the resurrection. And the resurrection makes all the difference in the world, does it not? Christians, without, right? without the resurrection, our faith is in vain. And I need to go do something else because the heck with this, right? But it is not. It is not in vain. So I want to read from Peter Kraft, a book here, part of the book anyway, Food for the Soul. This is a reflection, if you might mind, uh, give me the indulgence to read a little bit of the page here, page 289 of this book, <clears throat> about the resurrection. And, and also, the first thought would be, a lot of people look at the scriptures, uh, especially non-believers, would look at the scriptures and say they're, they're a myth, they're not real, they are something that is made up, and maybe there's something about Jesus, but we don't take him seriously. The fact of the matter is, is that his death was real, and it's funny because even scholars non-Christian, non-believer scholars will say, yeah, Jesus existed, but he, um, he didn't really mean to say what he said, and he didn't really do the things that he did. He was a nice guy and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, this is where we will diverge from that thinking, because we believe that Jesus not only was real dead on the cross, we believe he was real in his resurrection. So this is page 289, and let me just uh, read this. Uh, Peter Cray uh, writes, Christianity is not a philosophy, a set of ideas and values. It is, in fact, a literal historical fact. Christianity is based on literal historical fact. Peter says that he and the other disciples were literal witnesses of the resurrected Jesus, of the resurrected Christ. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians that there were 500 disciples who saw Jesus after his resurrection, and he invited his readers to go check that data to interview these eyewitnesses. You might have a few people who might claim to have seen little green men from Flying Saucer or Elvis, but never 500 at once. The resurrection is not a myth or a fiction or an ideal. It is a fact. And that fact, fact makes a total difference. If it didn't really happen, if the bones of the dead Jesus were to be discovered in a tomb somewhere in Palestine tomorrow, all of Christianity would be dead forever. There would be nothing left. The whole edifice, the whole building, the, the whole system, the whole religion would be would, would collapse because of its foundation. Its foundation would be gone. Quote, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. Quote, this says this hymn. As St. Paul said in his letter to the Corinthians, who doubted the literal resurrection of Christ, quote, if Christ had not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. And if those, then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are the most pitiable of all people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 through 19. Why? Why does this fact of Easter, the fact that Jesus rose from the dead, make a total difference in our lives? Because it's not just a fact about the past, but about the present. Christians confessed not just that Jesus rose in the past, but that he is risen in the present. He is alive now, today. You can meet him. You can pray to him. You can have a personal relationship with him, a relation of faith and trust and hope. He will really do stuff to you. That's right. You can pray to him. He's not deaf. He's alive. You can even eat his body and drink his blood in the Eucharist. What difference does the resurrection make in our lives? A total difference. In time and an infinite difference in eternity. A total difference in time, in our lives, in this world, because Christ is the Lord of everything in our lives. If he is not the Lord of everything, then he is the Lord of nothing. 
He's not just one among many. He is not just our friend and our model and our master. He is our God. And the difference he makes to the next life is also total. He is our Savior. The name Jesus means Savior. Savior from what? From bad politics? From depression? From poverty? From unenlightened philosophical ideas? No. From sin and death and hell. You can't be saved by a dead Savior. A corpse cannot conquer death for you. A corpse cannot conquer sin for you. A corpse cannot bar the door up to hell and open the door to heaven for you. A corpse cannot transform your life from a sinner to saint. A corpse cannot send his Holy Spirit into your soul and give you the supernatural gifts of faith and hope and charity. A corpse cannot reconcile you to God. There are only two possibilities. Either Jesus is a corpse or he is alive. And if he is alive, if he rose from the dead, then he is more than any mere man. He is God. The resurrection is the supreme miracle, the miracle that proves that he is God, that, that the God who created you and designed you and who providentially watches over every aspect of your life is also the God who loves you so much that he died to save you from your sins. If this Jesus is more than a corpse and a memory, then when you die, you too will be more than a corpse and a memory. He conquered not only his own death, but your death too. That's why St. Paul wrote, quote, We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. Quoting 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. And that hope is not just a wish. It's not just optimism. It is God's solemn promise. It is, quote, the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. That changes everything. We still have to live the fight and suffer, but put one foot in front of the other each day, just as unbelievers do. But it makes all the difference in the world, whether we do that in hope or in despair. Two people walking to London both have to put one foot in front of the other. As the rhyme says, one foot up and one foot down, that's the way to London town. But if one of the two people is going there to be crowned king, and the other one is going there to be hanged as a traitor, the two journeys are not the same. They are totally different. And every single person in the world is one of those two people. We are all going to die. But for Christians, death is the door to life. Death goes up to the light. For unbelievers, death goes down into the darkness. And it's total. The difference between life and death is a matter of life or death. That's the difference Easter makes for us today, to every single step in our lives. That's why we quote from the Messianic Psalm 118 today, that is Easter Sunday. God inspired the psalmist to describe the resurrection and its consequences in these words. And we see this in the Psalms. So when you then come to, to Easter Mass, to the Mass of the Resurrection this Sunday, listen to the psalm. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in him. Psalm 118. My friends, I want to wish you a blessed Easter. A time to celebrate the greatest event ever. The event that changes everything. That turns death into life. Despair into hope. And I hope that as you celebrate with your family and friends, that this reality, this truth, this literal fact of Christ's resurrection will inspire you to go change the world as well in his image, to love, to care, and to give your life away.
for the good of others, and for the glory of God. May God bless you, and blessed resurrection of the Lord. Bye-bye.